What's up everybody, it's your favorite Well, I hope this goes better than the last Slag's favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the G Creation Slag. I don't know what his name is, and frankly, I don't care. So, let's talk about the accessories he comes with, which are plenty to boot. His swords, but you can see he holds just fine. Let's talk about those real quick, and as we do, we'll move him out of the way. They are painted to the nines, which is something I've come to expect from this company and I always appreciate. The silver finish, the red chrome, and he holds them with no problem. Mainly, mainly because it's more of a five millimeter port type of deal. It's not like it has to tab in or anything. But you know, right tool for the right job, so I'm with it. He comes with two of those. He comes with two, let's uh, zoom in so we don't get any of that nonsense. Two uh, guns, one for each of you. Silver paint on there, there, and there. And we'll see if he can hold that I have a feeling it'll be the same issue, or the same situation. Yep, no problem. So that's another plus. So we're two for two. And the rest of the stuff we don't really need to worry about. It's a lot of combiner stuff. We'll talk about it a little bit as we go along. He does come with two of those guns. He comes with another hand, a little bear claw action. We're going to set that to the side for now. He comes with this gun, which is the same port, so we can hold that well. Um, but we don't really need to use this right now. And then he comes with combiner stuff, including uh, a sword handle, uh, and then a clip for that, and another sword handle, so he can hold this one as well. It's you know, it's it's th these swords are are stupid. I mean, not 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 necessarily in a bad way. Just you know, look at the size of this unit. It's like a little knife for me. It's like a little butcher knife. Doesn't ultimately matter. I'm gonna get this out of the way. We'll take a look at the figure. All right, let's talk about him. So the head is on a ball peg here at the neck, so you get up to there down to there and then the swivel no problem he's got silver paint both on the face and on the eyes i gotta be honest with you i'm not crazy about the face sculpt chill out for a second please uh, i'm not crazy I, I got a bunch of company over here they're gonna help me with the uh the combined mode so just pardon me the uh face sculpt looks good uh in the sense of sculpt work but i just don't like the design it doesn't look like slag to me um now they've been taking liberties with the whole set so i get it but for me personally um I don't know. This is a bit too far off the reservation. Uh, let's see what else. So we have the shoulders. They're on a hinge here so that you can get up to there. Uh, and then the shoulders themselves are on a ball peg, but they're pretty limited at the ball peg. So if you get up to here, that's about as far over as you're going to get. You can't, you know, if you go too far, it comes off the ball peg. I've already popped one off once. It does have the nice blue chrome finish, but I'll be honest with you, it looks like it could use a second coat. I don't know if you can see around there, around the edges. It just doesn't look finished, but it's a nice color blue, so I'll give them that. Hinge, like I said, gets you up to 90 degrees, so that's nice, but still fairly limited. So we have the ball peg shoulders. We have a bicep swivel. We have a double jointed elbow that gets you a little bit past 90 degrees, so I think that that's fine. Wrist swivel, nothing for the hands because it's a 5 millimeter port, and we have a finish on the claws. Same for the other side. We have a waist swivel. And now here's one thing I want to point out. These Dinobots, and we'll look at it more, um, or we probably have already looked at it because I've already put the combined one up first. But they've gotten less chromey. So it used to be that all the red was chrome initially. Now we're just getting like, if you look here, it's the shoulders and it's the side of the hips, which looks strange against the flat plastic. And it's a lot of flat red plastic here. I don't care for that, that decision. We do have the chrome on the chest, which does look nice. We have a waist swivel. Uh, it gets a little bit hindered, but you can work around it. You can unplug this bit. No, that's, that's not stopping it. I'm not sure. It just gets jammed up around the sides, I guess. And then this piece, but uh, we'll talk about that later. So for hips, we have universals, non-ratcheted, out, but he can do the full Chuck Norris split. And then forward and back, once again, non-ratcheted. Thigh swivel at the bottom of the universal. And then it's it's kind of a double jointed knee, but it, we're, I, you can't really utilize the, the other joint. and It's not meant for that. So we'll give him a little less than 90 degrees. So that's not great. For the legs, we do have this bit of business, which is like a tampered paint, which is nice. And we haven't seen that with the other pieces. So that's a nice little addition. And then we have the chrome here, which all works well. It's like a gold chrome type of application. And nothing for the feet. Uh, we just have toes to kind of fake it till you make it. So you get a toe tilt down, a little bit up, and then you put the thing in the position you want and you twist the toes to make it look like it has a rocker. But it doesn't have a proper rocker, but ultimately I'm okay with that. 
Uh, back of the figure cleans up fairly well. The wings do articulate on a hinge here, and then, ooh, these don't, and they are very small, so I'm not going to put too much pressure there. Um, but it does clean up fairly well. You can also move this whole assembly a bit closer to the head if you want, but you lose articulation as you get a little bit more of that like old school G1 look. Me personally, I think it looks better off to the back. Um, I still think you get the look and it becomes a little bit less distracting. You get more of the articulation and I think overall it's just a better choice. So that's where we are um, and we'll get going. We'll do our favorite thing in the world. Um, it's, you know, you know how we roll. We love it. Can't get enough. We'll tuck those in, tuck that in. We'll do the same on the other side. Tuck that in. And then we're going to move these arms out to the side just to get them out of the way for now. That's my wife's garbage disposal upstairs. If you could send her an email and ask her if she could turn it up any louder, it'd be great. Oh, she heard you. And we're going to move this head. Oh, you know what? This head here, if you look, like it's it's off-centered. So when you tuck this around back, this will come up and cover it up. That's nice. And then you can plug in the sides here of the wings. We'll sort out the dino head, uh, you know, in the end. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to leave this as wide open as we can. All right, so we're going to extend the waist. That'll give us a little bit of wiggle room. It's mainly for the arm, but I think it will come in handy. A lot of times with the Dinobots, like, uh, they have a hard time coming together in the end. I think that is going to help us out there. We're going to open this up like they've all kind of done, uh, and I know because I've just transformed a bunch of them. Uh, they just kind of explode uh, the, the Grimlock worse than the others. What is going on here? Why am I... There it is. And... We'll do the same on the other side. We're going to open all this stuff up. Just get it out of the way. This is pegged in here. This is something that they also do where you got to like pull one piece away from the others. I'm not crazy about stuff like that. It doesn't seem natural. And we'll move this leg out of the way in order to get the clearance. This just hinges out. And we'll move the dinosaur legs as need be in order to get the clearance. And then we should be able to G1 the hips, so to speak. Um, and once again, just because I've, I've just transformed a bunch of them, this one's actually better than the rest. But a lot of them, like, it's it's unclear where the hips need to go when you bring them down because one can, like, get closer to the middle than the other. Um, I'm just, I don't know. We'll connect this. There. That's a hard connection. Um, maybe I can tell you why later. I think it has... Uh, I'll show you. I'll try to anyway. No promises, actually. Maybe I won't. And then we'll uh, flip it around. We're going to leave some room. We're going to make sure that this is all taut like a tiger. Bring this around here. Yeah. Bring the tail, same for the other side. Mm. There we go. Just gotta watch the angle so you don't stress the plastic and we'll tab this together actually before we plug it in. One thing that's nice is the, the tail didn't break along the way. So there's that. Connected. We'll bring this in to cover it up. That's something they've done throughout this series is brought these little pieces in to kind of cover up the void space. I appreciate that. Bring the legs down. Bring the arms down. Sort the head out. Bring Something tells me I should have done this earlier. Might need a little bit of a tool. And there's some scratch chrome on here already. So be mindful, but I got it. There. 
Um, so I'll get them cleaned up and stuff and then we'll take a look at it. Oh, this is the Triceratops mode and it looks a little weird to me, but maybe you'll like it. If, I've, if there's one thing I've learned within the last month is that Triceratops that look weird to me look great to other folks. And that's fine. No, it's not. You're wrong. JK bros. This is um, ultimately uh, a little goofy for me. The fins do articulate here a, a taste, and that's cool. Uh, the jaw does move up and down. They have the same kind of uh, clear plastic with the gold underneath. That's something they've done from the Giddy Up, so we should have expected it by now. It's not my favorite design choice, but it's one of those things where if you didn't like it, you shouldn't have gone in on the, on the line, so I blame you. As for the arms, the nice thing is with this that you can get these shoulders out on that same hinge that we talked about in robot mode. So you can get the shoulders out and then you can kind of give them a little bit more attitude, which I do appreciate and I do think is cool. Articulation wise, the arms are the same as the robot mode arms. And let's see. The, the, the rear legs, you can bring those out here as well. So you can get those a little bit of extra distance. And then you get the swivel here. You get a double jointed knee there, depending on how you want to freak it, so to speak. And then you have the toes that can articulate down and swivel. And they swivel at the front as well, but they do not articulate down. But you should be able to use them as a rocker so that you can spread his arms out a good bit and then use the toes to kind of cover the mold. Um, which I do appreciate. You can also rotate these. Why is this one... What have I done differently here? Okay. So you can get those the way you want them and then get the toes in line. And that works. Size comparison wise, we'll look at them with the dinosaurs. Or maybe we already have. But for right now, we're bringing out, you know who, old bucket tracks. And decent size, I would say. But it is a little goofy. Um, just in the, in the way it kind of looks. You can angle it to make it look better. It's this, it's these feet. The feet look really big. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I, I, I don't think it's, it's terrible. And I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it, it looks different from the line. I think it kind of works with the line. It's just not my favorite design. All right, and then to get into arm mode, uh, you just got to kind of undo a lot of what you have done uh, and just reposition it. So, uh, you take this piece here, I, I think it, open up your wings. That's kind of a bummer. I wish there was a way to not have to do that just to make it easier. And then that is, that's the connection right there. It's ratcheted. I'm not going to mess with it. We're going to, we've already seen it combined, so you know it has to flip out. It has to flip out. Take my word for it. Close it down there. And then uh, you can, then you'll leave this piece up and then the combiner port will be sticking out there. Um, close these back up. You have to open up this whole bottom section and basically you're, you're turning him into a bit of an Ewok. You just, oh God. All right, there we go. I think I'm going to have to split these and I don't want to because the connection sucks. There, you hear that? And that's stressed right there. And the reason why is because this is a hook tab. It's not just a straight tab, it's a hook tab. So in order to pull the hook from around this, you need a considerable amount of force and it just stressed it. So that's stupid. Uh, we'll bring this around. And the same on this side. And then what you need to do I mean, that's not what you need to do. You can do whatever you want. I'm not the boss of you. But if you want to go to arm mode, you're going to need to bring this down and shrink him up a little bit. And then you tab this stuff back in. But we're not going to do that quite yet. You're going to bring this around and tab that in. You're going to bring this around and tab that in. There's a tab here that locks into there. So just position the foot in a way to do so. And same for this side. I got I got guys right now working on getting the other ones in combined mode so that we could get the combined mode. <laughs> um, so there. And then you want to bring this around 
And you want to extend. So now bring this around and there. I think that's it. And then you want to bring this hand in and this goes in there and in there and then all that locks together. I'm not going to lock it together because we're going to lock it together for the combined mode and I'm not going to stress that plastic anymore. But we will close up this and this and I'm not sure which way these these go. It doesn't really matter. Let's put them up here. And then and then this part tabs back in to keep it locked and you have your arm mode. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. I've got it. I've got it upside down. So, you want to spin this. There. I'll tell you why I'm trying to lock this back in. The big question for today is whether or not Joe is going to be selling this set. Um, but you guys already know if he wants to or not, and I'm jelly. Uh, but yeah, so that's basically it. That's the arm mode. It connects there, and then you have the hand. You know, I don't, I don't hate that. You know, I, I'm not a big Dinobots combined kind of guy. But, you know, if that's what we're doing, I don't think that's an, a, a bad arm per se. I think it's, guess what I think it is? Great. Fine. Size comparison wise, there he is with a modern day deluxe and a uh, kind of a masterpiece standard size. So I think he's too small for masterpiece. I think he's a perfect size for uh, modern day deluxe. Final thoughts wise, I'll get the negatives right out of the way. I don't like the face sculpt. That's definitely a subjective thing, but for me, it doesn't seem close enough to slag. I, uh, there's a, couple pieces like that that hooking clip and transformation that's bothersome and, I, and the shoulder articulation is limited it is a little bit kibbly but the whole line has been a bit kibbly so it kind of makes sense that this would continue in that fashion so i'm not really mad at that my big issues are uh mostly subjective the face sculpt the kind of the proportions of the of the triceratops once again like the like the bumpiness of them so to speak it's not like a smooth triceratops and and then uh, the shoulder articulation is definitely limited. Oh, the lack of chrome. That, that needs to be pointed out, too. Like, like that, that steady decline in that red chrome, which is giving it a very mixed, matchy sort of look. So a lot of these things are aesthetic things. The only things that are really bothersome structurally to this is that one hooking clip for the leg. And outside of that, it's fine. Materials feel good for the most part. There are some dainty pieces, but that's not really like the horns and stuff. But that's not because the materials are, are bad. It's just because they, they get small. But the materials feel good. The articulation is good. I could have used a bit more ratchets, but with the exception of the shoulders, the articulation works pretty much across the board. Tons of accessories to boot. Tons of paint. And the paint looks good for the most part. Could have used a second coat on that blue, but outside of that, not bad. I think that for a lot of people, this is going to come down to whether or not this works in combined mode. But if you're thinking about them for a robot mode, I think that they work perfectly for a chug collection, right? Because a chug collection is supposed to look, for the most part, like a modern day G1. And this definitely has those aesthetic evolutions that kind of seem in line with that. So I think in robot mode with a chug shelf, this is a good looking slag. I don't think that there's a better option necessarily that fits as well. You could say the Toy World one, but I think the Toy World one is almost 2G1 for most chug representations. But I guess stuff with like the Voyager MPP-10 or whatever it is coming out, you can go that route as well. But yeah, not hateful, not the best. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care. <laughs>